But the intent of the text is, nobody knows the time, so don't waste your time trying to guess the time. Be ready all the time, because Jesus could come back when? Anytime. You've got it. You give yourselves a hand. You keep that balance, and you'll be ready to go at a moment's notice planning your life as though you have a lifetime to serve Him, but preparing your heart as though the trumpet could sound at any moment. So the Christian always finds himself living in a tension of two worlds, a desire to make a difference in this world, and yet a desire to depart, which ultimately is far better, the Apostle Paul said. Now, as we look at the times in which we're living, it is obvious that these are not normal times, that things are changing, and that they are changing rapidly, and that we are, first of all, running out of time. I don't normally read from my own book, but let me make a comment from the Global Warning book, because I think it captures what I want to say so effectively. The world is in serious trouble, and everybody knows it. Something ominous is about to happen. Even the most powerful people on earth know that we are running out of time. Never before in all of human history has the world seemed so vulnerable to disaster and at a loss for a workable solution to do anything about the world's problems. Despite our amazing technological advances, our increasing prosperity, a growing number of opportunities for a better life, yet many people readily admit to a growing unease about the future. In fact, most would agree we are living in one of the most precarious, one of the most chaotic, even one of the most dangerous times in all of human history. As we look back over the last 20 years, it's obvious that great changes have occurred. With the fall of communism, we moved in transition into another phase in the prophetic program. When we read the Bible prophecies of the Antichrist controlling an economic uh, system in the last days, that he controls a global economy, you cannot then have two competing economies uh, vying for power and control in the world. It was obvious something had to change. And while many people feared that ultimately communism would take over the world, instead communism became bankrupt and communism collapsed. After the collapse of communism, the world markets began to strengthen themselves and people began to talk about moving toward a global economy. Where are we headed? We're headed into the global economy of the future, which is upon us right now. In all reality, the clothing that you are wearing was made in several different places around the world. Uh, the car that you are driving, you can say, oh, I drive an American car. I bet you parts of the engine were made in Germany, parts of the body was made in Japan, and the whole thing was assembled in Mexico, uh, and they put a license plate on it in California and said, made in America, uh, whatever. We're all part of the global system. And it's not the system that is evil. Uh, it, it's part of the advance of technology in our time. Uh, with satellite transmissions and computer technology, uh, with the ability to do things in instantaneous real time all over the planet. Uh, it is no wonder uh, that the global economy is a reality. The problem is we're all aware of the fact that the Bible gives us serious predictions about who will control that economy one day and that the economy must be in place so that it can be easily controlled. It, it's just one of many of the signs of the times in which you and I are living. Now, I want to invite you to take your Bible for a moment, and I want us to go to Matthew, the 16th chapter, where Jesus himself comments on the seriousness of the signs of the times. Jesus had been preaching in numerous occasions. Uh, in certain communities, he had done powerful miracles. But on this occasion, the scribes, the Pharisees, and the Sadducees come to him insisting that he do a miracle. If you're really the Messiah, the Son of God, show us a miraculous sign. Matthew 16, verse 1. The Pharisees, the Orthodox, Hasidic, extremist, uh, fanatical uh, wing of the Jewish people, uh, and the Sadducees, the more liberal wing uh, of the Jews, came together tempting him. 
Isn't it interesting that only the devil can get right-wingers and left-wingers to get together, uh, to get both extremes, uh, the legalist uh, and the liberal, uh, to say, let's both go after him at the same time. Uh, they came tempting him, uh, desiring that he would show them a sign from heaven. The word in the Greek text implies a miraculous sign. And he answered and said to them, when it is evening, uh, you say the weather will be fair because the sky is red. When you have a clear sunset, uh, you say it's going to be a clear night. But in the morning, when there's foul weather, for the sky is red and lowering. You know that old saying, red at night, sailors delight. Red in the morning, sailors take warning. Uh, when the sky's red in the morning, a storm is coming. But at night, when it's bright red, it's because the sun went down. And in Los Angeles, it's always red because of the pollution. Uh, but nevertheless, <laughs> he went on to say, Oh, you hypocrites, you can discern the face of the sky, but you cannot discern what? The signs of the times. I'd circle that. I'd underline that. Uh, Jesus himself talked about the signs of the times. You'll occasionally run into some Christian skeptic who says, well, I don't believe there are any signs of the times and all this talk about signs of the times. Where do you get that? From Jesus. Uh, he talked about it. Uh, and he rebuked his generation because they could not discern the signs of the times for their generation. Then look at Luke chapter 21 beginning in verse 25. Jesus is speaking again, and He says, And there will be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars, and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them for fear, for looking after those things that are coming on the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken, and then shall they see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with power and great glory. And then, when you see these things begin to happen, I'd circle the word begin. When they begin to come to pass, then look up, lift up your heads, for your redemption draws Nine. Yes, there are many signs in the Bible that have to do with the return of Christ after the tribulation. Jesus Himself said, uh, the sign of the Son of Man will appear in the clouds uh, after the time of tribulation, and He will come back to judge the earth and reign and rule in righteousness. Technically, there are no signs for the rapture. Uh, the rapture could occur at any time, uh, at any moment, uh, in an instant, in a moment, in a flash, in a twinkling of an eye, zap, we're out of here to the glory of God. Now, there are a lot of questions that are unanswered in the Bible, but the main things in the Bible are the plain things. In the rapture, you go up to the Father's house. In the return, you come back to reign and rule upon the earth. They are two aspects of the second coming. People say all the time, oh, you're dividing the second coming. Well, not any more than the first coming. In the first coming of Christ, you have the birth of Christ, the life of Christ, the death of Christ, the resurrection of Christ. Uh, you have the great commission to go and build the church. That's all part of the first coming. So it is the rapture and the return are both part of the second coming. 